So question four then from the 2022 Advanced Higher Paper 2. Three marks, integration by parts. Only the three marks though. Integration by parts. Use integration by parts to find the expression that results from this integration. Now, you may well put a little formula down the side and identify the parts. I don't because I just think if you can do that there, you can do it straight away here. And the first stage is going to be the same in both cases anyway. You may well put down something like, well, if you see an integral of two parts, where one of them you can recognise as the derivative of something, so you can readily integrate it, then the result would be integrate that, so you've got uv, minus and now differentiate the other one, v dashed. You may well put that down and then identify your u dash and v and so on. But essentially what you're doing is you're identifying something that can be integrated and identifying something, which is the other one, which can be differentiated, hopefully differentiated, to form something simpler than what you had to start with. Because there'd be no point in getting another integral if that was actually worse than the one you had. So really the first thing you're doing is you're looking for something you can whittle down that will produce a simpler integration. Well, if you differentiate this, that'll just disappear into a 1. So rather than writing that down, I just do my identification first. I can differentiate that because that will whittle it down. And I can integrate that, so I'll integrate it. So starting it off, integrate first. So leaving that alone, x plus 2 integrating that, well, that will just stay the same inside. That pops up to 3 upon 2, but now I've got to do a bit of dividing. Divide by the new power. Well, I don't want to write, you could write it underneath if you want. I'll just flip it upside down. So multiply by 2 upon 3, but also divide by the derivative of that inner part. So also times a half. Minus, now the integral of. Now that's been done, this big bundle here. That's going to get copied into here. But I'll do a bit of simplification for it, put it in. Now differentiate this one. Well, that just goes down to a 1. I'll show that by putting 1 times, even though it makes no difference. Now just copy this down. Well, that's just a third of 2x plus 7 to the power 3 upon 2 dx. Now, two of the marks are here already. You get the first mark for doing this bit of it. That's the integration part. I haven't chosen that. And you get the other mark for doing the differentiation part to produce this new simpler integral. Now it's just a case of tidy that lot up. Well, that's a third. So that's that part done. Now I can take anything out of here. So that's minus a third of the integral of, and now it's just that, 2x plus 7 to the 3 upon 2 dx. Just lots of copying down now. So one third of... Just copy this down. x plus 2, 2x plus 7 to the 3 upon 2, minus a third of. Now carry that integration, because you can just do that by inspection, because it's a simple known function of a linear function. So that will just be the 2x plus 7, add 1 to the power, divide by that new power, also divide by the inner derivative. Now that you've finished all the integrations, there could, of course, have been some constant lurking about so it can reappear. Now it's just tidy up. It doesn't actually say tidy up. It just says carry out that integration. So one third of x plus 2 times 2x plus 7 to the 3 upon 2. Now this lot here, they cancel out. That's a 15th minus a 15th of 2x plus 7 to the power 5 upon 2 plus c. That gets the last mark. Again, it just said use integration by parts to find this. It didn't say and simplify the result because that result can be simplified. You can tidy that up. You don't need to do this, of course. Well, you wouldn't do this if it didn't actually say. But you can take out any common factors and also the worst of the fractions to leave the remaining parts just as integers. So you could take it fifteenths. So I could take it a fifteenth. That two x plus seven is a common factor because I've got power three upon two there, and I've got power three upon two lurking in here. That can come out, and that having come out, well, I'll have to put a times five to reconstruct the third. 
that would just leave 5x plus 2, that's that first term complete, minus, well that's okay the way it is, and that would just be 3 upon 2 plus 1 makes 5 upon 2, that would just be 2x plus 7 plus c, so that would be a 15th, you don't have to do this remember, of 2x plus 7 to the 3 upon 2, of, now what have you got together, 5x minus 2x is 3x, 10 take away 7 is 3, well that's very handy, plus the c, well, there's a common factor of 3 that can come out. 3 over 15, that's a fifth. So that's just x plus 1. Times 2x plus 7 to the 3 upon 2 plus c. Which looks much neater. But it didn't ask you to simplify it, so that'll do.